Welcome to another Blue Prism tutorial with Dave the RPA Guy. What I'm going to do during this video is try to move you into using Process Studio and Object Studio in a conceptual fashion. I want you to understand the overview, then understand a little bit more and understand a little bit more. To begin with, what we need to know is that in the Studio tab, we have two different types of components that we work with processes, and I'll hit the drop down list, you can see there's a number of processes, and objects, and there's a number of objects here. Processes effectively have a single purpose, that is to hold business logic. A business logic is the set of instructions that you might take from your supervisor to accomplish your job every day. A colleague of mine frequently likes to refer to bots as interns. They may not be the smartest things ever. Maybe they can do impressive calculations, but they don't handle judgment that well. So you need to give the bot a set of specific instructions to follow, and the bot will only do what you tell it to. Step one, step two, step three, step four, to accomplish that manual process. Objects, the purpose of those, are to enable processes to interact with applications and then also to interact with utility functionality. Now the applications is kind of obvious. You have web applications where you, you have like a CRM. You need to be able to teach the bot how to interact with it. How, how do you add a new customer? How do you remove a customer? How do you update customer details? That functionality is held inside of an object. An object will have an action called add a customer, another action called remove customer. The other purpose, as I mentioned, was for utility functionality. And you can see here that there's a number of utility objects. For example, you can see utility strings. The purpose of this is to do string manipulation because sometimes that kind of manipulation, that kind of utility functionality, in the case that it's a really complicated thing, someone will develop an object that is reusable for the purpose of accomplishing that utility functionality here. And that's what you have, what you have here. You might find though that you need to make custom utilities and then you can create your own object with some reusable piece of functionality. So let's look at an example for that. You can see upon first glance that Process Studio on the left is very similar to Object Studio on the right. I'm not going to go through every single detail of this right now. What I think I'd prefer to do is as we work through building some things to, to see an introduction to how stages work and how they interact with each other, I'll show you some of the other pieces of functionality you can use within Object Studio and Process Studio. But for now, let me point out a few of the similarities. You'll see that the file menu system is going to be nearly the same. Most of this is going to be self-explanatory. If something is not self-explanatory and I don't explain it in this video, it doesn't mean that it's not important. It means you just need to go to help and then click on search and then type the word, maybe the word string, because you don't know what, what string means. Let's say there will probably be some help in here about what strings are. And this one might be it. So here you go. There's a string. The word string is all over the place here. What is a string? And then you can read up on that. Let me point to also that we have stages here on the left that we will use to accomplish the business logic here in Process Studio. And we'll use it to accomplish interacting with the application or creating our utility functionality, as I mentioned. Another thing I want to go ahead and point out is that while that stuff is largely similar between the two, the big difference between processes and objects is that a process can be run from the control room. So you can run a process as a back office robot, but you can't run an object by itself from control room. You have to use a process to call an object. Let me show you now an example of that. In my process here, I'm just going to create an action call to the object. We're going to leave it as action one, but what we have to do here is I've got to publish this action. So I've right clicked on this action one page name and I'm going to click publish. Then I'm going to save the object action one, and then I'm going to save. So I'm going to refresh just to make sure that I have access to the action that I just published over here business object. I'm choosing intro to object studio and there it's, it's pre-selected the only action I can use that is published. You can't call on initialize or clean up. Those are automatically called. So I'm going to choose that link start to action one and action one to end. I'm going to step to go one stage at a time step. I'm going to step in because that's what this button also does. It won't skip over this action. It will actually step into it. Now it has opened a copy of this object. This process over here now has its own copy of intro to object studio. It will have this copy for as long as this process is running, even if we don't see it on the screen. So I'm going to step one more time. 
and step one more time to finish up this action. What we've done is we ran this process, which has our business logic. And in our business logic, we needed to accomplish calling on this action over here because we made it do something we needed, whether that's utility, as I mentioned, or if it's using application modeler to work with an application. Let's go ahead and look at some of the stages. There are a lot of similarities between the stages of one and the other. Let's start from the top and we'll just work our way down. The pointer here is not actually a stage. It's more of a cursor setting. So it's the same thing as hitting F2 and that's what we're looking at now. We can click on stages and drag them around. The purpose of a link is to literally link stages together so that Blue Prism understands where the process flow is supposed to go. We start at the start stage, of course, it knows that, but then where do we go after that? So you tell it specifically, after I do the action one, I wanna to go to the end stage and that's it. The next is block, which is also not exactly a stage, but it's selectable like the rest of the stages. I can drag a block, and if you are familiar with programming, you'll recognize a block as like a catch block or a try block. And inside of this, what if any errors occur, it will get trapped within this block as long as we have a recover stage, which we'll come to in just a bit. So I'm gonna leave this block here on the page. The next is going to be the sub process. Now I know it says process here, but I'm just going to call it sub process because that's really what it is in this case. We're going to drag one onto the page here and use our F3 or click here for link to link it in. I'm going to leave it outside this catch block. This process or sub process stage can refer to any of the other processes. So let's say we'll pick the functions process, which isn't something we're actually going to be able to use in this case, but if we were calling it for the purpose of using subprocess that's how we do it next is page so if we had a page already we could reference it or we can drop the stage on here you see I have it selected already because I've clicked here I'm gonna drop a stage on here I'm gonna say add a new page and create a reference to it next I'm gonna name it test page one click finish now I'm gonna hit F3 again to link it in and now the program flow will go through this sub page. Now I'm going to go into the sub page and do something really quick so that it doesn't throw us errors. So I'm going to link the start to end. Normally you would do other things in between there. The next stage we have here is the action stage. I've already shown you how to do that because we dropped it onto here, but let's go ahead and look back into it. Here we chose a business object that has an action that's published like we have over here. Action one is published. And so I chose this and it will only show us actions that have been published. The next stage is the decision stage. This, if you're familiar with if then statements, is going to be very easy for you. I'll put another end stage here, connect it in, and if this comes out to be true, so I'm gonna say one equals one. This will evaluate to true or false. One equals one, question mark. If this evaluates to true, it will take the lower path. If it evaluates to false, then it will take the no path to the right. The next stage is the choice stage. I'm gonna drop this on here, redo these links. Okay, so if we get a yes on that decision stage, it'll code come down to here. And this choice stage is just like a decision stage, except that it's multiple decisions. So choice, one equals one, two equals two, and the first one that evaluates to true will be taken. Otherwise, we'll just do another end stage. We'll put an anchor, an anchor, and we'll link these into the end for now. Also, I can point out here that this is the same thing as a case statement if you're familiar with those. The first option that is evaluates to true is gonna be taken. So if I change this to one equals two for the first one, I should mention the, the, the left side here is just the name. I don't want that to be confusing. The name is one equals two, one equals two. This will be false, so it won't take that route. And this one is actually true. I meant to put two equals two here. It will come down and it should come down this path. And so we'll see that stage light up. The next stage is the calculation stage. We're gonna connect both of these into here because we want our program flow go in the same path we expect. The calculation stage is what it sounds like. You can do calculations, but you could also do things like string concatenation. You can call in some different functions that are listed down here. We'll just do something simple, Dave and the RPA guy. And it will concatenate that text and put it into Dave text data item. Speaking of which we'll come to in just a second here. Okay, so that performs a calculation for us. We'll call it concatenate. The next stage is going to be the multi-calc. The multi-calc is the same thing as a calculation stage where we can do multiple calculations. 
We'll put the expression Dave and the, and we'll store it into Dave1. We'll add another one for, actually we'll take uh, the data item Dave1 and add our P A guy and put it into Dave2. Now that we have created those and we're actually here to the data items, let me point out what these are. These are variables and you can have different data types for variables, flag, which is true or false, number, time, image, and binary. Data items are useful for holding values, so you get outputs from different stages. The calculation stages do output a value. It does some kind of calculation or concatenation, and then it puts it into a data item. Same thing with each expression in a multi-calc stage, puts it into a data item. We could even use the same data item or a different one. In this case, we chose to use a different one. The next stage is gonna be the collection stage, which is the same thing as a data item, except that it's a collection of data items in columns and rows, we'll say. Dave text and we'll put a data type of text create another field called Dave one just like this Dave two same thing okay so we've created a few field names we can move to the next stage type so that we can work with that the next one is the loop this is the collection loop stages here's the beginning of the loop and here's the end of the loop what you do with this is you pick a collection so I have one collection named call one let's actually create some data for ourselves we'll say uh, uh, test one We'll just put that into all the fields here and then we'll do test two, put that in all the fields and then we're going to loop through it with this. So I want to use my calculation stage, get row data and I'm just going to grab the row data here. We'll just get it from the first column and we'll put it into temp data. I'm going to link these in, link that multi-calc into the top of the loop, link the loop into the calculation stage, the calculation stage to the end of the loop, and then the end loop to the end stage. The note stage is a non-functional stage with the exception of if you put data into here, put some text here. You can just leave it off to the side as a comment that you have for your code, or you can actually link it directly into your workflow. And then when you run this, if you have this stage logging enabled, that will go into your session logs. The next stage type is the anchor. This is purely to help you organize your workflow. And we'll link all these in together. Uh, entirely functionless doesn't do anything it's actually similar to a note stage it can be very helpful to make sure that your your program flow is organized well and makes sense next is the end stage i believe i put in an extra end stage over here yep you can put as many end stages as you want but only one start stage and the reason for that is that when you run the page blue prism has to know where should i start from you can't have multiple places to start from an alert is, this is going to be a bit more of a setup, so I would advise you not to just start using this. You should probably look it up. You can look it up in the help of Blue Prism, but if you had alerts set up, then you could actually just type some text here into your alert, and then that would go to the proper people, but you have to do some other configuration for that to work out. If you just ran this, there would, nothing would happen. Nobody would see it. Uh, people have to opt in to be alerted to that. Okay, the next is the exception stage. So I'm gonna scroll back up here and you saw where we had a choice stage. If one equals two, then take this path. If two equals two, take this path. And it takes the first one it finds that's true. Well, what happens if neither of those are true in the case that it's, you know, like just two equal three, okay? Neither of those are true. Well, it's gonna go on the otherwise path. And right now I have an ending, but normally you might wanna have an exception stage. What this does is raises a an exception within Blue Prism so that Blue Prism itself understands this is an exception. In this case, I might say uh, this is a business exception because something happened with my data, nothing happened with the system, uh, the numbers are wrong. You, you'd probably normally type something more helpful than that. I'm making up all this data. Maybe, you know, name it something better than that. Business exception numbers. And you link in your otherwise stage into your exception stage. And when that gets run, it'll throw an exception. Actually, now that we're talking about throwing an exception, let's talk about recovering an exception. What we can do is use a recover stage. What happens is if an error happens here, there is a recover stage inside this catch block. It will jump to here, the program flow. There's no link, but it will jump to it. Then what you can do is uh, you can you can do some stuff in between here, but let me just make this simple for now. You can link a recover into resume. What that does is, is wipes out the exception. It clears it out so we no longer have an exception that we're dealing with, and then I could end.
And I believe that's the all of the stages in the process studio. Now let's move over and look at what stages we didn't use in process studio that are available in object studio. We did not use the read stage. I won't be able to show you this now. I'm going to talk about it. And then when we come back to look at working in object studio, I can actually show you interacting with an application, but effectively you would use this stage to get a value off of a web page or off of a, a desktop application. Now you want to write data back to the application. You'll use a write stage and navigation stage has a whole lot of purposes that I'm not going to go into now, but it has purposes such as uh, navigating to a different URL on a web page, launching a de desktop application, closing the desktop application, a bunch of different purposes like that. A code stage. The code stage has what you might expect code in it. So you can go to town at writing custom code in here. I would advise you though, be careful about this. Make sure that you know what you're doing or at the very least get some approval and some code reviews if you're going to write stuff in here because this is far more prone to errors compared to using Blue Prism's inbuilt functions and stages. The next is the wait stage. This we can actually show you. I'm gonna drop this in here, go into the wait stage, and I'll put a timeout of one second. And what this is gonna do is run, and it will wait for one second before it continues the process flow. We forgot to run this over here. How terrible of me. Let's go ahead and run this. And I'm going to play it. So we ran action one, we ran the process, we had an error because this process is probably not set up because I was just doing some testing, but it ran into an error. We're just going to loop this back to continue running because we don't actually care if we run into an error there. So it's going to happen again, but it will get caught and then it will move forward. Let's try it again. It'll run action one, which is just this sub page over here. And then it runs this, it runs into an error, it recovers, resumes, it clears the error. And now it's running our sub page here called test page one. Then it's going to, let me pause this here. So it did this, uh, it determined does one equal one? Yes, one does equal one. And so it moved on the yes path. Then it went to this choice stage. And remember, we set them both to evaluations that come out to be false. And so it went on the otherwise path. I'm going to change this second criteria to two equals two so that it's true. Now, when we run this, it will run on the second path. All right. Now it's doing some concatenation. You see it go into here and let's pause it so we can look here. What it did then was a multi calc is let's see, where did it put that into Dave two? Go into Dave two and look, we've got Dave, the RPA guy. Now we're running, we're going into this collection. And what we've done is we started it and now it's on the first row of the collection that we made. So it's looking at this row. What we expect to come out of it is test one. Whenever we get the first value of the first column, I'm just going to step one time instead of playing. You see it got the data from the first column. Now it's going to loop back to the second row test two in our temp data. Now I'm going to go ahead and let it play through the rest. The note stage doesn't do anything. It'll go on these anchor stages just to control the process flow. And then the alert stage won't throw an error. I don't think I have alerts turned on at the moment. So, um, it would normally pop up on my computer. Okay. So that's process studio and object studio. I think we've gotten a good overview of how these work. What we haven't worked with yet is actually how to use some of these stages, as I mentioned, because we're not connected to an application and we haven't really worked with application model at all either. That's something that I want to save for a future video because what I really wanted to set the stage for was process studio, but we're not going to work in object studio just yet. The reason I have this window open is that I wanted to show you the similarities between the two and the differences. So when we do come over here and work in this, you'll already be familiar with probably 80% of it.